Thank you, Cara. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I'm just going to say a few much. words. Hello, everyone. I'll just say a few words about Cara. So, Cara Bredmore is passionate about fashion and accessories as a vehicle to express oneself. Cara spends most of her time with jewellery, be it designing, making, buying, or even dreaming about it. Color designs and creates jewellery for dynamic, boldly creative women and men who fiercely follow their hearts and are drawn to Color, playful take on modern yet vintage inspired luxury. So, thank you very much. Thank right, you very thank much. You. I like how you announced, um, pronounced Kalua with your accent. Oh, really? Yeah, it makes it sound really fancy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, so, welcome. Thanks for joining us again. We're going to have a little chat, um, kind of listen to your story a little bit. And yeah, can you tell us how yeah. you started off initially? Absolutely. Um, so, I, I was born in Canada, actually. Mm. I randomly popped out there. Neither of our parents are Canadian, but mm. I uh, scored a passport out of it, so I'm pretty stoked about that. <laughs> um, I've got a bro beautiful brother and sister who are actually both entrepreneurs as well. Um, they've also got their own businesses, so mm. that always causes for great topics around the dinner table. I also have an amazing husband who's here tonight, always endlessly supporting me, um, and he's always a great reality check for me because he's an ICU nurse. Okay. So every day I go to work to play with sparkly, beautiful things, and he's off saving people's lives. Yeah. So a very good reality check for me um, to keep uh, perspective in check, which really? I think is really important in the business place. So. But um, we were really lucky growing up. We, we lived in a house where we were really encouraged to, to be thought leaders and to think outside the box. And I think in particular, even though it shouldn't have been this way in the sense of gender equality, we were exceptionally lucky that we had a father who really encouraged my sister and I as women to, to be anything that we wanted to be. And it didn't matter if you were a man or a woman. And it meant that I actually became one of the first um, Victorian Scouts, Boy Scouts or Girl Scout. Um, so, and that was an amazing experience. And I didn't even really realise it at the time that it was so forward thinking of my father to let me as a young girl be a Boy Scout or the first Girl Scouts. And that experience definitely shaped my resilience and so many skills that I've taken into my business life. And yeah, I'm exceptionally grateful to both of my parents for the upbringing that they gave us, but particularly reflecting on the opportunities that having a dad who was open-minded as a woman in business, which is a very hot topic now, the gender equality mm -hmm. space. So, um, and then I went to high school and I was always very into fashion design. And from there, I actually got into RMIT and did a fashion design degree. But after about two years, I, I don't know, I was not 100% happy and unfortunately our parents were going through a very messy divorce and I felt like I just needed to take a year, maybe like a gap year, but the wrong year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was meant to be going into my final year to graduate and I just, I just needed a break. I needed, to, I needed to go and discover who I was and really find more out about myself as a young woman. And so my, my friends and I bought a car for $800 and drove around Australia for a year, and it was the most remarkable year of my life. And in that year, I took, I always loved making little beaded necklaces. I had no idea how to do it, I just taught myself. And I took my box of beads and my wire and my pliers, and um, yeah, so. Were you selling them on the road? I was selling them on the road, <laughs> yeah. And it was an, yeah, it was a mind blowing experience. But I remember waking up about three quarters of the way around. Oh, by the way, we broke down 70 Ks out at Melbourne <laughs> for the year, which was quite funny. <laughs> These two blonde bombshells rocking to the petrol station. I remember saying to this guy in the mechanic shop, um, we've broken down. And I think he just stared at me thinking, how on earth are you traveling around Australia? <laughs> yeah. And anyway, I turned to my girlfriend because the end of the trip was starting to loom near and the questions around, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go back to uni? They all started creeping in. And I just remember saying to her, I was like, I wonder if you can study jewelry. And it just seemed like a really strange question that I'd never actually explored before. And so next thing I find myself cruising down the street, 
to the newsagents to buy the VTAC guide, which maybe some of you know and some of you don't know what that is, but it's the old university guide so you could pick which course you wanted to do. Um, and lo and behold, I opened up this section in the book and there was all these courses on jewellery and I was like, that's it, I know what I'm doing. And I just remember feeling this complete, pure, unquestionable, like no doubt, this is where I'm going, this is what I'm doing. And anyway, to my parents' dismay, they were quite upset and had always been very supportive in everything that I'd done, but they were like, what are you doing? You, like, you've got one year of your course left and I'm not sure if anyone knows the RMIT fashion and design course. It's exceptionally hard to get into, very sought after course. So they were like, you're mad. And I didn't feel like I had their full support, which was really hard. And even my brother and sister also thought it was crazy. So I felt quite alone in the decision to, to go into jewellery. But that now has been an instrumental learning for me in my business that I've looked back and always back to myself. And I think now I, you know, I give my, my family the, the big like, you know, <laughs> I, I backed myself and I, and I made it because I listened to myself and even though you didn't think I was making a good decision, I'm really, really so pleased that I did. But it meant moving to Perth on my own without my family and any friends um, because I'd missed the intake into the jewellery course at RMIT, which I really wanted to get into. And basically, um, I begged mum to post over my fashion folio, which she did, and I got into a course in Perth called Jewellery Design and Production. And at the time, I remember sitting in my first week of soaring metal and I literally was sitting at my desk crying because I was like, what have I done? Hmm. This is the worst thing in the world, trying to hack into this metal with this tiny little saw frame. Um, but week by week, everything went by and I just fell in love with the process of making jewellery and um, yeah, the next thing I know, I'm, I'm back in Melbourne and I'm applying for the RMIT course and so I go into the, that degree and then I went on to my master's and then I trained to become a diamond grader and um, in that whole period I basically, actually when I got off the plane I thought oh, I'd better get a job and I looked in the newspaper <laughs> Yes, the newspaper, who gets a job in the newspaper, and there, there was a, a job advertised that said, CBD jeweller requires assistant. And I'll never forget it, because I was like, oh, great, big, long description. I'll oh, stuff it, I'll just fax my resume in. <laughs> and I did, and apparently 500 people applied for this job. And I ended up managing this business for 14 years while I ran my own business. And it was a hugely instrumental um, in my experience and my knowledge and working underneath Ronnie Bauer, who's exceptionally highly regarded in the jewellery industry. He definitely helped map and shape who I am today and I'm exceptionally grateful for that. Um, and it's probably only been in the last three years that I've really dug into my business to understand why do you literally wake up in the middle of the night and draw jewellery for people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I literally do wake up in the middle of the night and my husband will be like, are you drawing again? And I'm <laughs> like, yes, I just have to draw it because I'm so worried I'll forget it in the morning. Um, but it's because I love it so much, but I never really questioned why I love it so much. And so I've done a lot of exploring in the last three years because in a way, jewellery is quite materialistic. So, and I don't think of myself as a materialistic person. So I wanted to understand what my relationship was with my business and why I was so driven by this thing that is technically a luxury and materialistic. And um, yeah, a lot of digging and a lot of unpacking and the words like brand identity and um, tone of voice and all these things didn't, uh, like even four years ago, of course I knew they existed, but they didn't really mean the thing to me. I had essentially just been loving doing what I was doing and just doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really pleasurable experience for me to really unpack why I'm doing what I'm doing. And what I discovered was the beautiful sparkly things that <laughs> women love is definitely the reason I do what I do, but it's not what drives me. It's not what gets me out of bed every morning. It's, it's the connection I get to form with my customer and my client and the long-term relationship. 
I get to go through so many experiences with my clients because it's not a transaction for me. It's a, it's a lifetime relationship. It might start with an engagement ring, then go on to a wedding ring, and then it might go on to a push present or a eternity ring. And then it's, oh, it's my wife's birthday. And then, oh, she's turning, you know, it's, it's, it's not just this one moment and it's one transaction, it's so much deeper. And whether people are consciously recognize it or not, jewelry is, it's very, empowering for people to process what they're going through through a piece of jewellery. So it could be a divorce or it could be their grandma's passed away and they want to redesign their piece into something else. Um, it, there's so many reasons that people embark on the journey to design a piece of jewellery. And for me, that's where, that's where the goodness lies and the, the part that really empowers me to want to empower them to heal or to grow or to love or to learn or to forgive or to say thank you or to say sorry. There's so many reasons that jewellery comes into play. So it's been a really magical three or four years for me, really discovering why I am doing what I'm actually doing. So, yeah, and that's... Probably... You're making my job very easy here, actually. Okay. So Did I just no. not stop talking? No, you can carry on. But <laughs> honestly, this is it's fascinating stuff. You're doing a great job. This is absolutely great to listen to. So um, I just want to kind of go... Everything's coming from the heart, and I just want to kind of go back to that stage where, you know, where you listen to your heart when you wanted to start... Was it a side hustle to begin with when you were working for the other jeweller at the time? Okay. Were you listening to your heart at that time, or was it a head decision? Um... I've always listened to my heart. I just always have in everything that I've ever done in my life. So definitely I did, but it wasn't as consciously listening to my heart. It was more just, I would, but it was definitely a side hustle to start with, for sure. And then the more the side hustle grew and the more I realized that I got to, I don't know, just fulfill these beautiful moments with people rather than it just being about making jewelry the more I got intoxicated in the process and the more I just wanted to be a part of that. So mm -hmm. it definitely is a bit of a combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the time, was the jeweller okay with this? Did he know you had the side hustle? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was my number one supporter, Brilliant. which is quite unusual. Um, he actually helped me name my business. <laughs> and we went through all the different brands, um, different scenarios and for any of you who are interested, it's nothing to do with the drink Kahlua. <laughs> it's, um, it's basically because to me, the concept of jewellery is that it's alluring and it pulls you in and you just have to have it. And my nickname is Car. So um, yeah, I just went Kahlua. And then I laughed and thought it was really funny. I went, you know what, I love it and I'm going to go with it. <laughs> and it was as simple as that. And um, yeah, no, so he definitely definitely supported me and still does actually. So. Yeah. And when you flew the nest completely and you went completely solo, yep. what were some of the hurdles you were faced with at that time? Um, I think definitely like if you speak to any entrepreneur, um, the loneliness of the journey in having to deal with everything on your own and making decisions around you know, everything and not really having another staff member to bounce things off and ask things to and everything all of a sudden landed on my shoulders. And even though, of course, I knew that was going to happen because that's clearly the next, that's the evolution of, of going out on your own. But it was, it, it took an adjustment and I, someone said to me recently, and honestly, this is so ridiculous that I only just realised it, but they're like, you are so brave. And I was like, why am I brave? And they said, because... Having your own business, is, it's, it's a really brave thing to do. And I was like, oh, actually, it really is. I hadn't actually triggered to that. And um, so I think, yeah, I think that was probably one of the biggest things was just the adjustment from going from having a team around me to just being me and everything coming back on my shoulders, mm -hmm. going out on my own. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, what were the, what were the positives out of that? Oh, my God, so many positives. Um, just being able to carve my day out how I want to, when I want to, the freedom to make all these decisions that, yes, they were hard and they might be scary, but just, yeah, it was really empowering to know that when I made that choice to do that particular thing for my business, I made that decision and I stood by myself and I backed myself every step of the way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's... That's definitely a huge positive in the process. Um, and just, I don't know, just waking up every day and knowing that 
I'm on my journey um, to do to achieve what I want to achieve. Awesome. Um, you talk about doing a little bit of soul searching and digging into the why of why you're in business and everything else. So now that you've put that in place, what is in front of you now? What are your main goals? Um, I definitely. Uh, a lot of people assume that because I'm a jeweler that I have a jewellery store and I don't see, I, ne I never say never, but I don't see me ever transitioning into opening a shop because what, what I try to encapsulate in every step of my business is an experience that people can't help but want to talk about and I think retail and the shop shop fronts now really struggle with being able to execute that for people. So my space that I've recently um, launched and opened to the interactive uh, workshop studio, it's an environment where people can come and visit me but also have experiences while they're there, quite, a, quite unique ones. Um, and I'm just in the process of designing a whole series of round the table um, dining and um, jewellery uh, interactive experiences where people actually come to the studio and it's more than just I've come to talk to you about a piece of jewellery I'm actually throwing them into saying here's a pool of gems and where you've got the freedom to play with them and turn it into anything that you like but into an interactive evening um, and I've got a lot of ideas around wanting to create um, a, a blog that's focusing on my clients who are women I'm very passionate about empowerment of women and I want to call it the Maverick Women's Blog and it's because so many of my clients that come to me are really, really impressive, powerful, amazing women who've got an incredible story to tell and I want to tell that for them, especially because they've come via the channel of um, them being a client to me. So that's another thing and I'm also about to roll out a ready-to-wear collection um, which is very exciting but also very nerve-wracking because um, up until this point everything that I've ever done has been around creating something for someone and even though I'm still designing it for them it's a about them whereas this is me putting my aesthetic and my design out there to the world with no reason for it and so there's a little part of me that's like, oh, what if they don't like it? <laughs> um, but I just can't, I can't know that I haven't tried in my life to achieve this thing that I really want to do, which is to have an online store where people can purchase and, and, and take a precious piece of Kahlua and own it, but they don't have to necessarily go through the whole process of the custom design experience. So, yeah, that's a few things that are yeah. got in the pipeline. Yeah, exactly. So was that always a grand vision? So... No, I think... Um, has that just evolved over time? Uh, yeah. I think this is what my vision of business is that you and you... I don't have a vision of becoming a multi-millionaire. I have a vision of... Of course, you need money and, of course, money is important, but it's not what drives me. It's not what drives my business. For me, it's about looking back and saying my business stood for something that was bigger than the sparkly materialistic things. It's about the journey, it's about the opportunity that um, every day meeting people, it, it, it's so much more than that. And I, I just, I just want to know, I just want to look back and know that I, I put that, injected that into my business essentially. And I've forgotten part of the question. No, that's, that's it. So it's just about the grand vision. If you always had that and obviously it's evolved. Obviously, you've looked back. Thank you, yes. Um, yes, it definitely has evolved. And I think the thing with business is that it is always evolving. You, Even though we can have a vision of where we want to be in a period of time, I think you have to let things evolve and let things unpack and grow because that's when the magic comes out. I suppose we all do it differently, but for me, it's definitely been an evolution. And I know it will continue to be because my business is so entwined with my emotional system and my personal branding and all that it's all it's all so interconnected whereas some people's businesses are very that's their business and this is me whereas i am very intertwined with my business yeah and from a decision making kind of point of view how do you kind of you know how do you stay ahead and educate yourself on business practices and things like that so um one of the things i really do think about with my business is that it's not about fast fashion. So um, 
when you decide to make a piece of fine jewellery, you're investing in something that is long term. It's something you're going to have potentially your whole life that you'll pass on as an heirloom to someone. So I'm, I'm, in terms of trends, I try to stay away from trends as much as that's important to a degree. And of course, I still look at it, but I try not to make things trendy in my business. But in terms of keeping ahead of what's available in my industry and what's new and fresh, I travel twice a year to Hong Kong for the world's largest jewellery trade fair. I actually just got back a few days ago from. And every time I go there, I go purely for um, my clients to shop for them, but it's also for the mind-opening experience of seeing what's actually happening around the world in the jewellery industry, because as big as Australia is in terms of land size, we are quite a small market and we're quite closed-minded when it comes to certain things. And I literally, some of the things that I design, I cannot physically buy the materials I need in Australia. They just do not exist because we don't have a big enough market to pull those things over here. So I find by going to this twice a year, I come back and I'm just so fueled with this whole new education and mind-opening experience of all these things that are happening overseas that we just do not even hear about in Australia. So I find that a very successful process for me and it keeps me fresh and interesting and being able to inform my clients around things that they're like, wow, I've just never even heard of that before, which is, yeah. Yeah, so investing in yourself is very important. Our two guest speakers last week swore by the fact that they invest in their own education and time. So how do you look after yourself? Are there any moments where, you know, things get on top, what do you do to invest in yourself emotionally? Uh, really, really good question. I had such an awakening to this in the last few years. Um, unfortunately, our mother went through a very difficult time and it really made me look into myself in terms of my mental health and my well-being. And, and I, I honestly believe everything starts at the top with you in business. You, if you are not looking after you, number one, then you will never be able to operate a business the best that you possibly can if you're not. So I make a really conscious effort now to always make time for myself every day. I don't nail it every day. There are some times, this is my husband, we would definitely attest to that. But I am so much better than what I used to be and realising that, you know, going for a walk and taking 15 minutes to myself and all the whole time I used to be like, oh my God, I haven't got time for this, I haven't got time to go to walk, I haven't got time, I'm like, just stop, just take the time because you're actually investing back into your business by looking after yourself. And yeah, I started doing yoga, which I don't really do regularly anymore, but I definitely, when I turned to yoga, it had such a, 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 an awakening experience for me to really connect with myself and to what matters. And your well-being is so important in business. And yeah, I go to the gym and do all those things that are really important. My husband and I recently moved near the beach and it was a really co a concentrated decision because even though we could have got a bigger house out further, I wanted to be by the ocean so we could get up in the morning and have that lifestyle and just make sure you take time to go for a walk and look after yourselves because bigger picture, we all can wake up one day when we've just worked way too hard and way too fast and it, what was it all for? You work hard and then you become sick and then, you know, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. so. Excellent. And um, just to... I'm actually about to go on a wellness retreat, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> <laughs> to Fiji. It is for entrepreneurs, so it is about work still, but <laughs> I also invest Combining in doing... Combining the two is definitely yeah. beneficial. Isn't it? Yes. So um, if you could go back and tell yourself one thing, obviously you've always been true to your heart and you've backed yourself, but w would there be something else you could tell yourself now? Probably actually the wellness stuff. Mm. I would go back and really, um, I know your 20s are supposed to be a little bit about, you know, not caring and about yourself as much. I know that's like part of it, but I think, I feel like with Instagram now and all these social media platforms that the younger generation are so in tune and so informed around wellness and looking after yourself that I kind of wish that my head was in that space back then because I definitely was not as consciously caring towards myself. And even from a you know, hard working perspective, it was almost like I was in competition with myself where I'd be like, how much did you achieve today? Can you do more? Can I push you more? Can you get more out of yourself today? And I, I wish I could go back and tell myself that you were doing enough mm. and everything that you did 
and everything you are doing is amazing just to be patient and to be kind to yourself. I was definitely like the, the, the voices that we all have in our head, are definitely a lot of negative talk. So if I could go back, that would be my number one thing. Thank you very much. Absolutely fantastic talk. So, guys, can we have a round of applause for Cara Breadmore of a Lodge Jewelry? Thank you very much, Cara.